Live, live. Okay, we're on the air. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Bruce here with Traveling with Bruce. How you doing today? Welcome to Monday. I'm just checking my picture. I'm in the middle of it there. I'm not, not too close, not too far away, just around here. How you guys doing? Welcome to Monday, February the 26th. Monday, February the 26th, 2018. Unbelievable. Wow. Uh, <laughs> February is just about gone. Unbelievable. Oh, I got all kinds of stuff to tell you today. Oh, wow, what a day. Action-packed day. Unbelievable. Um, first, the weather. Uh, let's tell you, here in Creston, British Columbia, uh, three miles north of the Idaho border is where I am. And uh, I'm looking out here. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous sunny day today. But unlike last week, when we were sitting here at like uh, 20 degrees Fahrenheit with the sunshine, 33, 35. We've been melting all day. Melting, melting. We did get a uh, real good snowstorm last night. Dropped about three inches, but uh, that all burned off. The streets are wet now. The sidewalks are wet. The driveway's wet. Uh, yeah, it's all burning away. That sun's angle is too much for the uh, snow to handle. And uh, and with uh, not too much wind, uh, yeah, we're doing great. So things are looking better in Creston. I'm happy to report. I hope it's good in your neck of the woods. If you're just joining me for the very first time uh, and you're wondering, what is this guy doing? Uh, I'm Bruce, and my channel's called Traveling with Bruce. I love talking about cruise ships, holidays, traveling, you name it. And uh, it's a Q&A every day, uh, Monday to Friday at 5 o'clock uh, Eastern Time, Saturdays at 2. And you can ask me anything you want about uh, traveling, uh, cruise ship vacations, uh, going on a holiday, uh, you name it. I've got news for you guys today. I've got updates. I got, ah, oh, I got lots to tell you. So I'm excited. Um, first of all, I don't know if any of you guys get this in the mail. Do any of you guys get this in your mailbox? Let's see if you can see that. Okay, this is a uh, brochure. Uh, in this case, from Princess. And um, I used to get a little a brochure about half of this size, like only about half as high. It would be more like a giant po postcard thing that would be taped closed at the end here. And uh, it would have kind of, you know, all the offers that they're offering on their, on their cruises. They'd show, uh, you know, pages like this here. You can see here, I'll just I'll try to hold it up without making it too difficult for you guys to see what I'm doing. You know, here we have, you know, different itineraries and prices and stuff. These are what we call the, bro the brochure prices. I mean, this is a brochure. And so you got beautiful, happy pictures of happy, happy uh, travelers. Don't we look like that, don't we? Yes, we do. Uh, our wives and girlfriends all look like that. Always have. Um, my wife looks the same as when I met her when I was 21. She's exactly the same. It's incredible. It's just, you know, she doesn't believe it herself, but I tell her, oh, honey, you haven't changed a bit. <laughs> Since 76, I'm still alive. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I got this in the mail uh, last week, and I noticed how glossy it is and how you know, heavy the paper is. And uh, uh, this cost a bit of money to print and mail um and um i'm looking through it and 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 i found at the back something interesting i'm just going to show this little last little page here right here these little columns here uh these are columns about um uh elite levels uh gold ruby platinum and uh oh, the elite yeah okay <laughs> ruby elite level so the more often you cruise on the cruise line they keep score. Don't worry. You don't have to worry keeping score. You don't have to worry about doing that. They do that for you. They they, they count the money. <laughs> and for every night you spend on a cruise ship, they they add it to your like little the little meter. They have a little meter running on you, and uh, tells them uh, you know if you have so many nights you're at this level, and so many nights more you're at this level now, and you get perks. You get perks up the scale you go. And someone just asked me this morning was uh, was Debbie Emanuel, one of my regulars. How you doing, Debbie? I'm not sure if you're watching right now. I'll find out in a second when I look over here. Uh, Debbie was asking me a question about the uh, the whole thing. And uh, uh, she asked me, you know, is it, is it worth your while or is it a good idea to be, uh, to stay with one cruise line and then just, you know, build up your points, uh, loyalty points, just like, you know, loyalty credit cards and everything else. Uh, or, uh, you know, do you, do you, you know, does it not really matter? And, uh, you know, try different lines and different cruise lines and different things. And um, I thought about that question, and I said to her, you know, your question is so darn good. I'm going to bring it up on my show. <laughs> I thought, hey, that's a good question. I thought, why, why, why waste it just by giving her an answer on my thing when I could, I could kill 20 minutes talking about this? <laughs> I'm not going to do that. But anyway, um, on this one here, on Princess's uh, levels, it's called Captain's Circle. Captain's Circle benefits. 
Uh, I now have done two Princess Cruises for 14 days, and I'm still at the low end of gold. I'm still at the gold level. Or am I? Uh, yeah, after I, you complete your first cruise, you're golden. I'm at the gold level. And uh, what I get are um, uh, supposedly special launch savings, reduced deposit, preferential pricing offers, Circle Center Online, standby program, refer a friend, Circle Savings account, Princess Cruises Captain Circle Magazine. I think that's what this is. Uh, Princess Passport and a gold member pin. Never received the pin. Never received anything. I don't, don't ever think I got any of this stuff. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying. Uh, now, if I go for four or five cruise, so from your fourth or fifth cruise or 31 to 50 cruise days. So, you know, think about that. If you take like a repositioning cruise, that's 16 days long. And then you've taken three or four other cruises. You're already at that level. You're now a ruby level. Ruby. And for that, you get all the gold benefits plus uh, exclusive shore side access to a Captain Circle help desk phone line, premium, uh, no, upgrade to Princess Platinum Vacation Protection, uh, double benefits for accidents and sickness, medical expenses and baggage, personal effects coverage, increases special cancellation credit feature to 100%. I don't know. And then a 10% discount off the purchase of our Reflections DVD on board and a Ruby member pin. So you get another pin. Now, if you stay 6 to 15 cruises, so between 51 and 150 cruising days, now you're at the platinum level. So you get everything from the gold and the ruby, and now you get these added benefits. You get internet credit uh, for 7 days or less. You get 150 free minutes. For 8 to 20 days, you get 250 minutes. Did I say that right? Yeah, 7 days or less. Yeah, that's right. And then voyages, 21 days or longer, you get 500 minutes. Priority check-in at embarkation, platinum disembarkation, lounge access, complimentary cruise atlas, and a platinum member pin. And then if you hit the elite level, that's the top of the, the, the heap here. From your 16th cruise or 151 days at sea or more, cruising days. For that, you get everything from the platinum level, including advanced 24-hour access to preview and book new itineraries, complimentary professional cleaning, laundry services, and shoe polishing, uh, priority ship to shore tender embarkation, priority disembarkation, 10% boutique discount, complimentary grapevine wine tasting, complimentary mini bar setup, cana canapes on formal nights upon request. Upgraded stateroom amenities, traditional afternoon tea in stateroom upon request, and an elite member pin. So the more you sail, the more you get. So Debbie was asking me, is this, you know, is this worth one's while? Well, I say it is uh, if you love the cruise line. It's a simple answer. I hate to be vague about it, but if you love Princess, and there are people who love Princess and have for years, decades. Good at pace. Say, sail with your favorite cruise line. If you've got a favorite ship, sail with your favorite ship. Uh, let's say you want to take the winter. You know, you decided I'm not going to stay in Florida for the winter. I'm not going to stay in Arizona for the winter. I'm going on a cruise for the whole winter. I want uh, January till uh, the end of March, let's say three months. I'm going to be on a cruise ship. Well, you might be just on Princess Cruises for the whole winter. Caribbean. You get a, you get, you know, you put your deals together one after the other after the other. And you rack up your uh, 90 days of cruising right there. And by that time, you've already reached several levels of benefit. And, uh, you know, if you've cruised before, you've already added it to those numbers. And then um, later in the fall, you might go again. You'll be at, a, you'll be at this uh, top level in no time. So if you love the cruise line, why, why not? But things are changing so fast in the cruise business that um, cruise lines are now finding, holy moly, we've got to we got to keep changing our offers to these people because, my God, the competition is just ahead of us all the time. Cruise ships aren't the same anymore. They, they, they used, to, you know, 15, 20 years ago, all cruise ships were kind of the same. They were like a certain size. You know, they varied a little bit in size. Uh, they had, you know, different color schemes and, uh, you know, different, uh, you know, styles and different atmospheres. Okay. But you know, they didn't. They didn't have like from like what you see now on the Oasis of the Seas or Harmony of the Seas or the soon to launch Symphony of the Seas. There was nothing like that twenty years ago with five thousand passengers, rock climbing walls, wave running machines, 
water slides on a cruise ship. Are you kidding me? Zip lines? None of that existed. So the cruise ships all had the, uh, the little golf ball uh, simulator or the, uh, the net, the net at the back, you know, where you could hit a golf ball into a net. <laughs> 20 plus years ago, you're allowed to hit golf balls into the sea. You can't do that anymore. They have allowed that in the sort of international conventions. Pollution, you know, plastic in the ocean. Uh, they had skeet shooting, you know, off the back. Uh, they don't do that anymore. <laughs> uh, and, you know, and then they came up with a sports court, you know, where they had, well, they all had shuffleboard. We can't find that anymore. And then they had, you know, the basketball court and then the volleyball thing, all netted. And they, just, they were all the same. And they had the pool. And, and uh, they had the big dining room, and uh, that was that. Well, today, oh, my goodness, you know, each cruise line has its own distinct personality, has its own distinct characteristics, has its own distinct style. And, uh, you know, cruise lines like, like, uh, like uh, Viking, 18 or under, you can't get on the ship. Perfect for old people like me who want to be, you know, with the wife and quiet. I guess you've got the money. Let's do it. Uh, but then, you know, now you got Norwegian with uh, the, you know, the water slides and kid zones and the H2O clubs and, uh, you know, Royal Caribbean with all their activities and Carnival with their fun cruise. Shaq, Shaq, the former basketball player, is the ambassador for Carnival fun times. I mean, it's these ships have completely changed over. So the changes are coming so fast and furious and so, so amazing. I mean, from one end to the other. Uh, with skate, you know, ice skating rinks, bowling alleys, uh, pool tables that levitate, you know, on and on go the the variety. The, the bliss is going to have the electric go karts. Um, as a frequent cruiser, or as a as a cruiser, you kind of ask yourself, do I want to limit myself to one line of one style of cruising only, or do I want to kind of get a taste of everything? And um, what if uh, if if it's my wife and I are going? I'm 62, so if we're going on a cruise, we're not going on a hectic, noisy party cruise. We're going to go something a little more sedate and lower key. But if my daughter, you know, and her guy want to come along and there's a granddaughter coming, she says she's five or six by that point. There's grandma, we've got three generations. We have a multi-generation uh, family going on a cruise. Can't take them on a quiet old celebrity ship that won't fly. So now we got to look at Royal Caribbean or something else, but there's a ship for that, right? So it's kind of interesting how you kind of build up loyalty points on certain cruise lines. But on the other hand, you kind of say, well, I, I might have to be flexible here depending on just, you know, what it is I want. And I think also it's age related. You know, if you've starting, you start cruising in your forties and you're still cruising in your seventies, you might change your, uh, your wants and needs and uh, tastes. And so you may shift into a different line as time goes by, but either way, I don't think you can lose. Uh, and with the deals out there all the time, uh, I think you, I think you should be flexible to be savvy and to be uh, willing to say, hey, you know, uh, we can get a five and a half star cruise line over here on a really good deal. Why don't we try that? We've always talked about it. Why don't we give them a go? I know we're not getting loyalty points for them, but we'll start a loyalty point campaign with them. But the deal might be so good if it's two, three hundred dollars a person less, you know, six hundred dollars for the two of you to take this cruise. Um, it's it, it, the price is so good forget the loyalty points and let's go, right? So I can see how it can go either way, okay? That's a quick answer to that question. The other things I wanna tell you folks about, uh, subscriber count, uh, and it keeps going. Uh, you people out there, all you newbies, uh, thank you for joining this channel. I'm getting subscribe subscriptions, like it's like every couple of hours, there's another one, there's another one, There's it's incredible. I wake up every morning, I see new subscribers all through the night coming in i love it uh we got off the air i last saw you guys saturday afternoon ish and i was at 1124 subs or so right now i just looked a few minutes ago 1164 40 more that's 164 subs over the a thousand mark that we were scrambling to get to a week today isn't that isn't that something it's just fantastic i'm so appreciative i have seen so many youtubers out there who are sitting at a thousand and ten they got there and they haven't moved an inch because they're all fake subscriptions and they got no, they have no views, no action. And I'm just waiting for YouTube to take some of their subs away. Cause they're all artificial sub for sub, you know, promoted, you know, almost bought subs. I mean, it's ridiculous in our case here, this channel just keeps on chugging. We're growing and expanding. The comments I'm getting from you guys are fantastic. Really good. Interesting questions. Uh, sometimes you kind of stump me for a while. I have to do some work, <laughs> So I love it. Thank you very much for, for that. And on thank yous, I have a big thank you today 
I don't know if she's watching or not. I, I, I apologize, folks. I know a whole bunch of you are writing in saying hi to me. I will get to, you all, to all of you and say hi back to all of you folks, of course. Uh, I don't see her yet, but uh, you may know uh, one of the names that pops up here once in a while. Her name's Kathy Butler. And Kathy Butler is just an all-star. She's just a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful subscriber. I, I can't thank her enough for everything she's done. Uh, Kathy Butler has been retweeting almost all of my tweets. <laughs> she's telling the world out there, you got to watch this guy. And she'll retweet a tweet of mine, put a little message in there and, and tell the world, you want to know about cruise ships? You watch Traveling with Bruce. And she's just been terrific. Well, I got a surprise from her on, um, on uh, Saturday evening. I was just I was getting ready to go to bed. I was pretty tired. Uh, I'd done the show and then... Uh, you know, after dinner and watch a little bit of TV, and I was getting ready to turn in. I saw an email come through, and I got a notification that um, uh, Kathy Butler had made a donation on my Patreon page. And I, I rarely mention it to you. I, I, most of you folks probably don't even know I have one. Uh, I don't even know if you know what Patreon is. But back in, I started my channel in August, and then around October, I launched a Patreon page for Traveling with Bruce. And what that is is a, uh, it's kind of like a, well, it's a an offshoot of crowdfunding. It's not necessarily a crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is where you say, I want to raise $1,000. As soon as we get there, I'm going to do this, this, and this. Patreon is more of an ongoing pledge uh, site where you can pledge a dollar amount to a creator. And once a month, you you know, X amount is just taken off your credit card with your authorization. And the, the creator builds a bit of an income over and above their thing. Well, Patreon is really designed for channels that have a lot of subscribers. And uh, I thought, well, I'll launch one and learn how to use it because I had no idea how to do it. And so I launched it in October, not expecting any donations, and I didn't get any. And uh, I created it, and uh, I got it up and running. And I haven't done much with it since about really since about December because all of my energies are just focused right here with you guys on this and my Twitter page and my Instagram and my Facebook and my uh, Pinterest I got five platforms or whatever, four plus now this Patreon. Anyway, I've got a notice. She made a $10 pledge to my uh, Patreon account, a monthly pledge of $10. And I just want to thank you so much for that. I, I was totally out of left field. I had no idea that was coming. And all I've done with Patreon is um, a lot of creators out there will say, oh, if you give me $2 a month, I'll do this. If you give me $5 a month, I'll put you in a special club. If you give me $10 a month, I'll, I'll do that. They make all these offers that just to me are so over the top. And I'm thinking to myself, how are, have you got any time to do your videos? Uh, you're, you're, you're trying to look after these Patreon people. Why don't you just make videos? Because that's what they want from you. And so I did a deal where I just said uh, $3. Just give me 3 bucks a month as a Patreon supporter. And I'll give you a mention on one of my videos. And that's it. <laughs> There's nothing more to it. And I can just concentrate on what I'm doing. Uh, but the way Patreon says it is, they say it's uh, $3 or more. So uh, obviously, Kathy looked at that and went, $3? No, I'm going to give them $10. So she, she donated $10 to me. So I'm publicly thanking her so much for that. It was just a total shock. And um, and I just want to let, let everyone know she's a serious supporter, and I really appreciate it. That's wonderful. Okay. One more announcement. I got another now. This is a biggie. Um, I got an email last week or a, a, a comment last week from a viewer who was saying, have you ever considered making your broadcasts, these broadcasts, at a later time in the evening? Because 5 o'clock Eastern time, a lot of people are just barely getting home from work and they don't have time to, to catch it live. And I've been noticing in the last oh, two weeks or so, I have a number of people who seem to join me with about 20 minutes to go in the day, they kind of kick in. And I think what's happening is that they're home around 6 o'clock, 6.15, and they turn on the computer and go, oh, he's still talking. I'll watch the rest of his show while he's still talking. And then once Bruce is done and gets off the air, then I'll, I'll watch his uh, rebroadcast that he made at, at 5 Eastern from the beginning and go from there. Because I always get these highs, how are you, I'm here uh, from these regulars. And I can tell by my analytics, it shows my, there's a graph as to how many people are watching at any one time during the whole show. And I tell you, my numbers are unbelievable. In the last 20 minutes, I have the most viewers in the last 20 minutes rather than the first 20 minutes. So a lot of folks are catching in and going on. And so what I thought I would do is I'm going to do a little experiment here. And for the next several weeks, I'm going to add a new show. I'm going to now on Tuesdays and Thursdays, do a second show. So I'm going to do Monday to Friday every day, five, five o'clock Eastern, like I always always am doing. 
But on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm doing a second show, 8 o'clock Eastern. And so that'll be, uh, you know, 7 o'clock Central or, or, yeah, 6 o'clock Mountain and 5 o'clock LA time. Um, and I'm going to give that a try for the this next several weeks. And so tomorrow is two for Tuesday. I'm going to be on at 5 and I'm going to be on at 8. And uh, you folks are welcome to watch both shows if you want. You don't have to, but I'd love it. But um, for any of those you know, someone who's, who, who would like to watch my show or can only catch the reruns, they can catch me live at 8 Eastern tomorrow night and see what you think. Um, and it'll be a live show. It'll essentially cover mostly the same topics, except that I will steal from the first show, what, what we're talking about here. I will incorporate that into the second show because I want to take the best of the best and move on from there. So that's the, the other announcement I'm making today. I thought about this Saturday night and Sunday, and I decided I was going to give it a shot and see if the vocals can handle it. So I'm now up to eight shows a week. <laughs> Just, I think I just won't stop talking. And uh, we'll see how it goes. So tomorrow night, 5 and 8. Uh, okay, what else am I doing here? I've got some announcements, which I'll get to in a bit. But first, let's say hi to everybody. Uh, those of you who are, again, joining me for the first time, don't know what's going on, people sign in. They tell me, where are they watching me from? What's your high temperature today? Uh, anyone has any questions, you can just fire away and ask anything you want about cruising or traveling or you name it. I see 44 viewers already. I, I ask any of you if you would be kind enough to give me a thumbs up on my videos. That would be great. There's a little thumbs up signal probably on the bottom of the screen. We hit a big number on Friday. That was unbelievable. I was so uh, amazed. I think we hit 60-something uh, hit likes. And I was so appreciative of that. I see we already have 14 likes as it is now. I haven't even asked for any. So if, if any of you out there want to give me a like today, that would be great because every time I get a like, uh, the algorithms uh, flash over at the YouTube computers and they go, oh, this guy, Bruce, this guy, oh, traveling with Bruce. we got to promote this guy. He's getting all kinds of hits. That's what we want. We want to grow the channel. Uh, Heather Young is saying to me today, 62 degrees in Kentucky, sunny. Hi, everybody. What a lovely day in Kentucky. Uh Tell you a quick story about Kentucky. Uh, 1971, my, I used to live in Kitchener, Waterloo, Ontario, uh, which one of my viewers knows. And uh, mom and dad said, going on a holiday in March. We're going to take the van, the old Ford Econoline van. <laughs> We're going to drive to Florida. Oh, man, never done, never done that. Before. Never, been, never been to Florida before. And uh, we left in a blizzard in uh, Kitchener, Waterloo, Ontario. Drove past London, Ontario, down to Windsor, across the border at uh, Detroit. Then past Toledo and uh, through Cincinnati, around Cincinnati. And the first night, we ended up in Lexington, Kentucky. I'll never forget it. We were in Lexington, Kentucky at something like a Holiday Inn. And I couldn't believe it. We had left in the morning in a blizzard. And in Lexington, Lexington Kentucky, it was 60 degrees. Green grass. Blown away. I thought, my God. Are you kidding me? I was, I was maybe, what was I, what was I, 15 and a half, 15 and a half years old, 16 years old. Are you kidding me? One day's drive, just one day in a Ford Econoline van. We can be here in this weather from there. Was, I looked at my dad. I said, dad, why are we living where we're living for crying out loud? We could be down here. It's only one day's drive away in a car. He said, you haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> so the next day, Chattanooga, Tennessee, we ended up there for a day or two some big caves in Chattanooga, Tennessee that we took in, quite unique. And the day after that, drove through Atlanta and all the way to Ocala, Florida. And we're surrounded by orange trees and grapefruit trees. Unbelievable. I looked at him. I said, Dad, come on. It's 1971. You can't tell me you can't find a way to move us down here. Why don't we live here? What's wrong with you? You know, I should have said to him, Dad, in 47 years, I'm going to be wanting to do a YouTube channel all about cruise ships. And if I live down here now, I'll be here when it's, and I can do those, and I can take those cruises. I can just drive to the ships. Never thought of asking him that. I just didn't have any foresight in my life. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, Kentucky. Love Kentucky. Hi. Uh, Charles Jordan. Hi, Bruce. 66 here in good old Iva, South Carolina. Charles, welcome back, buddy. Exilus uh, <laughs> Poso. This is my friend in Tokyo. <laughs> good morning. Cloudy and a high of eight degrees Celsius later today in Tokyo. Welcome back, my Asian friend. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if it's a Mr. X or a Miss X. I, I'm not sure. I, I, you've told me I've forgotten, and I apologize. Wes Morrison is here. Wes, hi, Bruce. It is 75 sunny here in New Braunfels, Texas. First sunny day in over two weeks. About time. You deserve it. 
you've had enough of that rainy stuff. Welcome, Wes. Scott Batchley. Hi, Bruce. It's another nice day in Ventura, California. We're up to 61. Pamela Jordan. Hi, Bruce. And everyone. Heather Young. Hi, Pamela. Paul K. <clears throat> hi, Bruce. Beautiful, beautiful sunny day in Hanover. Pennsylvania, 58 degrees. Finally, after many days of rain, you got a break. Finally. Uh, Peter Heckema is here, 86 degrees in Tarpon Springs, Florida today. Just wonderful. I want to know what the story is on the cruise card leaning against your speaker in the background. That is a card from the Norwegian Epic. And uh, I took that cruise, uh, I believe, uh, yes, it was uh, the disembarkation day was uh, January the 11th, 2015. And um, I was assembly station F1. I had to assemble there. There's my name and my, uh, my uh, it says Latitudes. I'm a bronze member, I guess, you know, whatever. Norwegian Epic. There's the barcode. Uh, and um, on the back, I had this little sticker added on when I did my check-in because I had registered, um, when I booked my cruise, I had registered for the, ma the uh, what's that called? Mandera, the Mandera Spa. And that gave me access to the Mandera Spa for the whole cruise. It was a one-week cruise. Miami to um, uh, one day at sea, Oco Rios, Grand Cayman, uh, Cozumel, and a day or two at sea and back to Miami. Great cruise. Loved it. The ship was uh, had pluses and minuses. Um, there were pluses about the ship that I liked. There were minuses that I wasn't so happy about. Uh, I've talked about them a little bit in the past. And uh, but the cruise was great, and my wife and I enjoyed it very much. Uh, let's see here. Sylvan Forrest is here. Hi, Bruce. We reached 84 degrees Fahrenheit today here in Delray Beach, Florida. Dad and I are sitting here with our cigar and libation, enjoying your channel. Hey, Dad, how's it going, Pops? Good to see you, buddy. Welcome, both of you guys. Fantastic. Uh, Pamela Jordan. Hi, Heather. Gailey S is here. Hi, everyone. The beast from the east is here. <laughs> There's <laughs> a serious weather system that's hitting the UK. They're dropping the day one degree Celsius nearly every hour. The snow earlier, it's minus one at the moment. Oh, my God. Stay inside. Get the fire going. Get on some warm tea or some hot chocolate or warm up some wine. Put in some cinnamon sticks. Do what you got to do. Just whatever you have to do. Stay alive. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, Michelle Ingersoll is here today. Hi, Bruce. It's 48 degrees and abundant sun here in upstate New York. Welcome, Michelle. I'm not sure if you're brand new or not. If you're brand new, welcome. If you're a regular, welcome back. Nice to have you here. 48 degrees in upstate New York. We'll take that. Debbie Emanuel. Hi, Bruce. A bit late today. Uh, only 50 in, in Chico today. Finally getting much needed rain. Uh, so all is good. Oh, thank goodness for that. Yes, Debbie, I was just talking about you uh, with that question you had for me uh, earlier on my uh, thing. Uh, let's see. Sylvan Forest, not 20 Celsius. I meant 30 degrees Celsius. It, what is this? An ice age? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sylvan's telling me about the temperatures in Celsius. I'm reading the Fahrenheit because I know most of you are from the U.S. Uh, Alunai, uh, Al Alani Column is here. Hi, Bruce and everyone else. It's around 50 here in Fort Worth. Fort Worth, Texas, I'm assuming. Fort Worth, Texas. Debbie Emanuel, thanks for my televised answer on my uh, question today. I told you, I told you I'd answer it on the, on the air. Scott Durwood, hey, Bruce, 23 Fahrenheit in Haver. That's better. Uh, Scott, that's better, but you're not playing beach volleyball yet, buddy. <laughs> not yet. No, don't trust it. Don't, don't trust it. <laughs> hey, welcome, buddy. Paula K, we get that circular uh, since we cruised on Princess three times. Paula, you're getting it like I'm getting that circular. Okay. Crash 3X, my number one. She's saying, hello, four degrees and sunny in Ottawa, Ontario. Welcome back. Charlie Baum. Hi, Bruce. I'm a diamond member too in Royal, uh, Royal Caribbean. Uh, the only priority boarding, uh, and three free drink a day. Well, three free drinks a day, 21 drinks in seven days. You know, if you can swing one on de disembarkation day, maybe maybe it's 18. Way to go, man. Welcome back, Charlie. Scott Batchley, I am Ruby on Princess and several other lines as well. I say why not? It costs nothing to join. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, you don't even join, really. Uh, you just, you just, they just tell you what you are. <laughs> I've done two uh, cruises with Norwegian, and you know I've done now 19 or so days on Norwegian. I know I'm a member of probably the bronze program or whatever they got there. Um, let's see. It doesn't hurt when you you know you're looking at your next cruise and you mention you put in your card number or your last name, and they go, "Oh yeah, yeah, Bruce, yeah, you're a member of our uh, blah blah blah. Let us show you some deals. Uh, show me." Uh, sometimes though, they 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 can't beat the vacationstogo.com deal, surprisingly, or, or not. Yeah. You know? 
Uh, Elizabeth Breen is here. Until the kids are older, Carnival is for us. Gotcha, Elizabeth. Right on. Uh, Michelle Ingersoll saying, uh, MSC uh, Voyagers Club accepts your points from other cruise lines, so you can move up pretty fast with them. And I have heard that. Thank you for mentioning that, Michelle. I had heard that a little while ago from uh, another couple of viewers a couple weeks back. And, uh, you know, they're trying to make inroads here into North America. Just unfortunately for them and unfortunately for the people who've been on the seaside, <sighs> hadn't been a lot of fun, has it? It's been kind of smelly and uh, a number of other issues on MSC. But, yeah, MSC is desperately trying to build a brand and they got some issues to fix to really – get our loyalty, right? Uh, wow. Uh, let's see. The Steaming Bean is here. It, it, it took my channel almost a year to get 200, but loving vlogging. Uh, right on, but uh, fantastic. Uh, uh, well done. Steaming Bean, I've been promoting Bruce's channel on the Norwegian Escape group page. Thank you, sir. Thank you very, very much. Appreciate that, too. Uh, sell stickers like Nomadic Fanatic. Well, I will do a number of things eventually, but... Uh, Right now, uh, this is month seven or six and a half, and right now my focus is on subscribers, 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 content, 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 a library of content for you to watch and others, uh, views, uh, awareness, uh, and getting remonetized because <laughs> I'm still not remonetized. Day six and counting, no money coming in, so I'm waiting for a number of things to happen. Um, Pamela Jordan. 6.30 Eastern would probably be a great time for most. Well, you know, we're, we're, I'm, I'm going to go 8. Uh, I'm going to get off. Uh, this one here starts at 5 Eastern. It usually finishes at 6.30 anyway. Then I have to post it, get it up and running, and then I get an hour off to eat something and freshen up, and then booyah, 8 o'clock Eastern. I'm back, baby, prime time. We'll see how it goes. Uh, Debbie Manuel, yay, more shows. <laughs> Scott asked, actually saying, what a nice idea. Two shows sounds like a lot of work. And yeah, it does, doesn't it? That doesn't, doesn't sound like a lot of work. Uh, story of my life. Wes Morrison uh, looks like I need to drop my cable. You are more informative and entertaining than a TV show. <laughs> if I could just get some special guests, you know, like, uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Jerry Seinfeld, you know, I'll bring them along, but they're not coming. Uh, Simon uh, Erie, 88 in Orlando. You dog. Simon, how are you, pal? Welcome to the show. 88 in Orlando. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. Doreen Chapman, hi, Bruce, plus five, and rain here in Nova Scotia, still above the freezing. Uh, Anne, Anne Marie uh, Passaretti, hi, Bruce, 51 degrees in Long Island, New York. Cruising on Ruby Princess to Alaska in July for the first time. I'm so excited, flying into Seattle and cruising Glacier Bay. I've been on the Ruby Princess, uh, great ship, big ship, lots of, uh, you know, lots of room to get around and... Uh, Food is okay. Uh, wasn't as great as Holland America, but it's okay. Um, I was disappointed they didn't have when I was on it. Uh, now, probably well, about a year ago, they didn't have the pizza uh, um, stand that they had on the Princess ship prior to the uh, Ruby being in Los Angeles, where they had the Italian type pizza being made on order. They have a pizza stand, if I recall, uh, but it's on the pool deck. And it's okay, uh, you know, regular pepperoni, cheese type pizzas, um, and then they also have the, the 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 hot dogs and hamburger stand. I think on the other side, brats and that kind of thing. So lots of good food on the on the deck during the day. And then you get your buffet, and then you get your main dining room, and especially restaurants. You will have a great cruise. I'm sure you're going to enjoy it, and I look forward to hearing from you when you do it. That's fantastic. Welcome to the channel today. Steaming bean minus six Celsius in Sandy Bay, Saskatchewan. Yeah, you're up there, buddy. Uh, <clears throat> Not much further north. It's the tree line uh, ways yet, but you're up there. Oh, Thomas Arnold, big bear, checking in, Bruce, 36, and looking for a foot of snow through tomorrow night. That is great news, Thomas. You deserve a foot of snow. You need the moisture badly all through that region. It's uh, California needs moisture badly, and I'm glad to hear it's coming. Kelly Stoyanovich, uh, 52 here in Canton, Ohio. Kelly, how are you? You're the new. You're a newbie. I got your first message on, uh, I think it was Saturday, you said hi to me. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the chat. It's great to have you. My wife is going, Canton, Canton, Ohio, bucket list. It's a bucket list for her. She's a Steelers fan. Huge. 
Bucket list, Canton, Ohio. Yeah, I'll be there someday. Michelle <clears throat> Ingersoll, yes, new. I've been watching for a couple of weeks, but just caught you live. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And uh, starting tomorrow, I'll be on live twice, 5 p.m., 8 p.m. Eastern, uh, doing two shows Tuesdays and Thursdays. The Steaming Bean, my parents had a place in Delray Beach, Florida from 1973 and had it until they passed. Great place. How about that? Uh, it was a lot different in 73 than it is now, I bet you. A whole lot different. Um, Michelle is saying uh, we're cruising uh, on the seaside in June for my in-laws 50th wedding anniversary and I'm hoping the problems are fixed by then she's crossing her fingers fingers I'm crossing my fingers I'm crossing my toes I'm hoping for the best because boy they have had issue after issue after issue uh, some are mechanical some are personnel uh, yeah I'm uh, I'm just you gotta think that there's somebody kicking boots somewhere some boots are being used to kick people and get things going Oh, I want to hear some positive reviews from the seaside, and uh, the sooner the better. I tell you that. Peter uh, Heckema saying, question for you. I know I can bring two bottles of wine on board on embarkation day. Uh, can I also bring water, and if so, how many bottles? Uh, yeah, you can. Uh, you can bring water on board. I have I have literally seen uh, a family of four uh, get on, uh, I think it was a princess cruise in L.A., and uh, – Dad had the uh, had like a backpack and and he was pulling a, a carry on. Mom had the young one, the the, the six year old carrying that that one, <laughs> and the the fourteen uh, year old teenage boy who was already stretching out. He had a case, a twenty four bottle case of water from Costco, and he had it on his shoulder just like that. And he walked right on board, <coughs> went through security, no problem. You know, put it through the machine, put it back on his shoulder, and they walked right on board the ship with a case of water for the family. And I'm sure Dad had the wine in the uh, in the backpack or in the carry-on bag with the roll-on bag. Um, you know, no problem whatsoever. So yeah, you can bring on as much as you want. As much, what can you carry? It really, it, it it matters not. Uh, Debbie Emmanuel, uh, Wes, Amen to that. Uh, she's commenting on uh, what are you commenting on again? Uh, oh, uh, looks like I need to drop my cable. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Debbie. <laughs> Crystal Johnson. Uh, hello, Mr. Bruce. Right now it's 49 degrees and rainy in Burlington, North Carolina. Well, at least it beats 29 and snowing, right? Uh, but that's the weather this time of year for North Carolina, I think. Kind of normal. Uh, welcome, Crystal. Uh, and I hope you're feeling better because I know you were uh, not feel doing too well last week, but I know you're coming around. Uh, Anne-Marie Passerati. Thanks, Bruce. You're welcome. Anne-Marie saying, do you have do you have any uh, Alaska videos or recommendations for excursions? I'll be in Ketchikan, Skagway, Juneau, Victoria. Uh, I don't. I've never. I've never taken a a, 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 a Alaska cruise. Um, but I got good news for you. There are a gazillion uh, videos about these stops on YouTube, uh, but they won't be done by me. Uh, you're going to have to just go in there. Um, you may want to even uh, type in uh, on the search bar, uh, "Princess Cruise to Alaska." and see if anyone's been on a Princess Cruise Ship up there already. I'm not sure if the Ruby did it last year or not. If it did, you'll find people who were on that ship. Type in your room number if you know it. What's your cabin number? And look for a YouTube video on your cabin. You might find either the exact cabin you're going to be in, and someone will have filmed it for themselves, posted it on YouTube, so you can see what your cabin's going to look like, and the first timer you want to know. Or at the very least, um, let's say you're in a balcony room, uh, and you can find a video on YouTube about balcony cabins on the Ruby Princess for an Alaska cruise. You'll find someone else's video on a room similar to yours. And that's going to give you a whole lot of information, a lot of intelligence on your ship, because there are tons and tons of Ruby Princess uh, videos on YouTube that have been shot, and you'll be able to watch a bunch of them and get to familiarize yourself with the ship you're going to go on. Okay, little tip for you from this guy. Uh, good, good plan. Uh, the steaming bean positive reviews will happen for the seaside w once they <laughs> once they crack open those crates of free breeze. <laughs> free breeze. <laughs> That's right. As soon as they get all that that uh, that sweet smelling odor, oh my goodness, that, what a mess. Debbie uh, Debbie Emanuel saying Norwegian has a, a new zero water policy. Really, a new zero water policy. Get out of town. Really? Oh, my goodness. All right. Shove it in your luggage. And make them take it out. Make them. Um, ridiculous. Kelly Stoyanovich, uh, tell the wife 
to uh, come during Hall of Fame Week parade, meet and greet for uh, uh, enshrine in, in, in and a big party, whole week and a half of football fun. Oh, uh, believe me, uh, my wife has kind of figured out when she's going uh, to Canton. She's kind of she got it kind of penciled in, you know, loosely. Um, ben, when Big Ben gets called, yeah, yeah, she, she, I think that's when it's going to happen. I, I don't know how I'm going to stop her. Uh, on the other hand, she might go when Troy gets called. Has Troy been called in yet? Troy Palomalo? I can't remember. I might be too late for that already. I'm not sure. I have so many years to wait for you eligible, but I think uh, Big Ben is who she's kind of. I think she's kind of targeted. We'll see. Uh, uh, but it's going to happen. Believe me. Uh, Sherry, Sherry Ann is here. Hi, Sherry, Sherry Ann. Hi there. Sunny and 34 in Connecticut. Ah, you're at that, you're in that zone where it's still winter and south of you it's warmer, north of you it's awful. It's the way it is. Welcome, Sherry Ann. Uh, it's nice to have you. Um, take the, uh, my friend from Tokyo is here. Take the ropeway up in Juneau. Uh, I believe the view from the hill is really beautiful. I hope for clear weather. Uh, yeah, there's also a, uh, uh, isn't there a great, uh, fantastic zip line up in, is it Skagway? Uh, one of the ports up in Alaska. There's a fantastic, uh, zip line i've seen video on it and it looks pretty cool uh well well worth your look uh or maybe it was skagway he was he or she's saying peter heckema uh we've been on an alaska cruise out of seattle make sure you have an outside cabin with a balcony the scenery is unreal the price is more but well worth the money and they're expensive uh, uh if they go through vancouver they're really expensive because good old british columbia and the port of vancouver is outrageous for the costs uh, i i live in british columbia i know taxes here are out of this world um, but, um, uh, it's pretty, there's no doubt about it. It is absolutely pretty. Yeah. Okay. Let me see here what I wanted to mention today. Um, I read, I, I came across a story about, and about a half an hour, 45 minutes before airtime <clears throat> that maybe you folks have heard of already. Some of you who are avid, you know, followers of the cruise biz. Um, but I came across it today and I thought it was kind of neat. There's a, there's a company called story lines, but they're all one word story lines. It's a cruise ship company. I'm going to loosely call it that. That's not what it really is. They're based out of London, England. They're headquartered in London. And um, they are launching a ship that they're having refurbished right now. Um, it looks to me like a cruise ship from about the 70s uh, or 60s or 70s, one of these kind of former ocean liner styles ships. It has one big funnel in the middle of it, and it has the, uh, the older look to it. Certainly not a modern day balcony type cruise ship or anything like that, but they've they've got this ship and they're refurbishing it. They're putting a forty million dollar uh, refurbishment on this vessel, and um, it's a five hundred eighty four foot long vessel, uh, eighty foot feet, eighty two feet wide. Excuse me, the beam. Uh, it's twenty four thousand tons in weight, and uh, it has four hundred fifty cabins. And the unique thing about this one is that the cabins are going to be sold like condos. Uh, we've been talking in the last two weeks about living full-time on a cruise ship uh, or permanently on a cruise ship. And I know there's the one ship called The World, I think it is. It's been out now a number of years. Uh, and you can buy occasionally. The, the, the cabin will come for sale on it. But those are rather pricey, uh, you know, upwards of a couple million in some cases. But anyway... This uh, company, Storylines, is uh, they've got a website called it's I think it's Storylines.com. You can check it out for yourselves. Google it, and uh, they have five uh, classifications of condos available or cabins available for sale. Uh, the lowest priced cabins are two hundred fifty-five thousand to four hundred thousand dollars. Of course, these will be probably uh, they'll definitely be inside cabins. They won't even have a window. Um, 183 to 248 square feet. So if you're living in New York, uh, that's big. <laughs> if you're in Manhattan, that's sim simply luxurious. Uh, but for the rest of us, it's kind of like it's a bedroom. Um, they're uh, they're looking for uh, people to buy these. Uh, the second large cabin, the next one is 258 to 291 square feet, going for 345 to 515 thousand. And I think these are uh, outsides. And then for 301 square feet to 355 square feet, we're looking at 415,000 to 580,000. You're at a half a million. And then from 366 square feet to 452 square feet, 585,000 to 630,000. And then for the biggest cabins available, 570 to 624 feet. That's like a studio apartment where I'm from. 
one million to 1.4 million dollars these do have balconies um there's a condo fee involved and here's the thing um you buy your unit and you own your unit and uh, you can use it or, or have someone else use it on your behalf i'm not sure what if you're allowed to quote rent it out i don't know what the rules and regs are i haven't had time to bother to look into this some of you folks may want to look into that but um here are the condo fees to give you a, an idea of the dollars we're talking about uh, for the cheapest cabin, uh, the smallest cabins that are from 255000 to 400000 the monthly condo fee is $4,770. The most expensive unit, uh, the biggest one, the condo fees are $9,533 per month. And this includes um, the crew, uh, the fuel, uh, the running of the ship, your meals, uh, it includes uh, all of your utilities, from what I can gather. It includes medical, basic medical as well. Uh, so I'm going to guess a checkup and, uh, you know, where a doctor's visit to your cabin probably won't run you extra. But if you need medical care above and beyond, then you're going to have to have that through insurance. However, you know, however that happens. The ship is, in effect, going to be a world traveler. And the passengers on the ship, the owners, will decide the routing of the ship. And it sounds to me like every oh, every three months or every six months or, or so, they're going to have like a meeting. They'll have their condo meeting. And they'll they'll throw up itineraries and, and, and talk about it. What, what do you think about this itinerary for the springtime or this itinerary for the summertime or this itinerary for the next six months? We're, we can, you know, we're here now and we can do this, 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 this. But the whole point of the ship is to circle the globe on a continual basis, see ports you would never see on large, gigantic cruise ships, obviously, and um, and stay at port cities for extended periods of time. So um, you might be at a pier for like a week, uh, maybe two weeks. You might be at a pier for four or five days and then move on to the next location. Uh, so it's wholly different, completely different than a regular cruise where it's just, you know, go, 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 seven days, get off, next batch on, go, go. This is going to be slow boat to China and all around China and <laughs> all around Indonesia and Australia. So it sounds like an interesting concept. The, the, the kind of concerns I have are well, the monthly fees. I'm going, wow. Uh, but the other concerns I have is that the, ship, the ship's overall age uh, ha kind of makes you wonder. I can understand, though, that if in the um, budget, if there's a say a thousand dollars a month per cabin, four hundred fifty thousand dollars per month is set aside for maintenance to keep up that ship. It would that be enough? Is five odd million a year enough to keep it up? I, I don't know if it's enough. These vessels get beat up by the sea, and um, you know they need to be lovingly looked after. The other concern, of course, is the age of the vessel with respect to replacement parts. If something fails, you know what do you do? And and also with crew. Um, you know, are you going to have uh, issues keeping crew on staff long enough? This fee will cover your condo, will cover your uh, housekeeping fee. Uh, it covers um, uh, some entertainment. There's a pool on board. There's a spa on board. Uh, they, uh, they, they, are, they have a main dining room. They have a coffee area like the, the bistro bar. They have that. And it's all inclusive. It's all inclusive. Um, but... Um, uh, you kind of wonder if that fee, that monthly fee, may be variable and may only go higher as the ship requires more loving care. Don't know. But it's a neat concept. It's a unique thing to hear and see. You kind of wonder, you know, you, you sort of think about it and go, wow, what if, uh, what if uh, Marriott Corporation were to team up with uh, oh, Norwegian or something like that, a big, you know, a big line? And uh, or Viking Starline or something like that, and they were to commission a six hundred million dollar vessel that could hold, you know, uh, two thousand passengers or eighteen hundred passengers. Uh, would you be able to condoize one of those right out of the shipyard, like brand, brand new, state of the art, everything? Uh, but of course, being a condo type unit, it's not going to have a bunch of water slides and rock climbing walls and all that sort of thing. It's going to be a liveaboard type unit, but if you commissioned it right from the get-go, you can design the cabins to be of a larger size rather than, you know, have these miniature little closets that we're used to on a cruise. Uh, but again, the the uh, the question, of course, is can you get your 600 million out 
uh, from the cabin, the sales of the cabins, uh, and then uh, get enough capital in every month to operate the ship and, and make it profitable for the operator. It, it's a, it, it isn't being done by anyone, so I'm kind of thinking maybe not. Um, there's sort of one ship that seems to be doing it, but I don't know if that ship was a brand new ship or it was a design ship. I have no idea. But uh, interesting concept. I thought I'd mention it today and uh, get your thoughts on it. So let's see what folks are saying here or what else they're telling me. Um, let's go here. Uh, let's go. Um, Anna Maria is saying thank you uh, to our friend in Tokyo. Uh, Leslie's, uh, Lovelies is saying hello, Bruce and fellow cruisers. I'm Leslie, my first time successfully joining your live chat. Welcome to the live chat. Leslie's, it's great to have you here. Fantastic, you made it. Uh, Anne Marie uh, Passaretti saying thanks, Peter. Yes, we do have a balcony. Uh, very good information there. Touchdown 821 is here. Hi, Bruce. I enjoy the show. It's 66 in Phoenix. Um, do cruise lines check if passengers have a violent crime history and exclude them from the cruise? Very good question. Um, off the top of my head, I can't answer that question in, in, in any certainty. I can only speculate um, with this thought, and that is if you're going to be on an international cruise, which out of the U.S. it has to be an international cruise unless you're cruising simply uh, the Hawaiian Islands uh, with uh, Norwegian cruise lines. You fly to Honolulu, get on the ship there. That's a ship that only flies U.S. waters and has American staff. And I don't know if you actually need a passport to get on, although for ID purposes, they'd probably really like one. If you're going to get on a cruise ship on the mainland, um, it has to go to an international port. Otherwise, it has to be staffed by American workers, has to have all kinds of American uh, content on the build out of the ship. And the Marine Act is just so onerous that no, there is no American cruise line, period, that can operate economically in that environment. The Americans have priced themselves out of their own business. It's incredible. But, you know, protect the, 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 the shores and there's uh, national security concerns and whatever the reasoning. We're going back way back into the early 1900s and 1800s for a lot of these rules. Anyway, today, you want to get on a ship in Miami that's going to go to the Caribbean, you're going to go to uh, maybe uh, Grand Cayman, Bahamas, uh, Bermuda. Uh, you're going to another number of countries. You're going to need a passport. And in order for you to get a passport, to have a passport, the United States government is going to have to issue you one. And uh, uh, if you've got a background of this nature, uh, it might be rather difficult to get your hands on a U.S. passport. Um, countries who accept travelers with passports are, in effect, saying to the host country, look, uh, we know, we believe in your uh, due diligence uh, with respect to the reputation of the traveler that you've issued a passport to to travel internationally. In other words, America, you wouldn't send a, you know, a, a violent criminal to our island knowingly if you've given him a passport, would you? Same thing with us. Here in the Bahamas, we would not issue a passport to a known troublemaker and then allow them to come and you know, ask you in the United States to accept this person without questions by just allowing this passport to make it work. So passport restrictions are, are tough in some countries, tougher than others. Uh, and I would think that an individual with this kind of background might have a tough time getting a U.S. passport. But again, I'm, I'm not a State Department expert, not a Homeland Security professional. I'm just going on what I kind of know over, over my lifetime of experience in the travel life and uh, love to hear anyone else's thoughts on it and see what, uh, what their thoughts are. Um, as far as employees go, by the way, they do a serious vetting process on employees. Uh, they are very particular about the employees they have on board. Um, the crew, they're vetted. Uh, and of course, the crew have to have passports. All employees have to have a passport uh, from their home country. So all the, uh, the employees from India, the Philippines, Indonesia, uh, you know, any, any, whatever country they're from that are working on board the ship, but any capacity, they all have passports. And they have to have them renewed every five years or so, whatever the amount is. And the cruise line is responsible for their behavior, um, you know, wherever they end up. So um, th there's a lot of vetting going on in that respect. Okay. Uh, Leslie is saying uh, 33 degrees and cloudy in Allentown, Pennsylvania. 33. You're right on that border, just like in Connecticut. George McCrower is here. George, uh, 81 Fahrenheit, mostly sunny in the villages. Uh, greetings, 
uh, for, from everyone. He's a little late today. Hi, George. Nice to have you, buddy. Gail AS. Hi, Leslie's. Uh, uh, she's saying hi to you. She's from the UK. Uh, uh, Leslie's is saying, I would miss seeing new faces and meeting people from all walks of life. I would miss seeing new faces and meeting from all walks of life. Um, oh, from because of the ship, being on that condo ship? Well, actually, uh, turn that around like this, my darling. Uh, that ship will go to every port around the world, and you will meet all kinds of interesting people, actually. Um, but I have a suspicion that um, if you have a... Um, a cabin on board and they have any vacancies on board or if you know a neighbor that isn't going to be on the ship for a few weeks i think there's going to be all kinds of deals made uh, between cabin owners and the one cabin owner will look to you and say are you going to visit your family back home for uh, any time and you might say yeah i'm going to i'm going to be gone for july to uh, visit my family back home and that neighbor of yours might say i'll rent your condo from you because I got friends of mine that like to spend a month with me on this ship. Let's make a deal. And the reverse could be true down the road. I can see all kinds of people coming on this vessel to visit family and staying on for a week or half a week or two weeks or whatever. Uh, I can see a lot of that going on. So actually, you really wouldn't be banished, you know, out on a on a ship somewhere, gone from everybody and missing everybody. I don't think that would be the case. Plus, you'd have internet and Skype and you know, all that sort of stuff anyway. But that's just my fantasizing about it. Uh, uh, Leslie's is saying, hi, Gailey. Yes. Okay, touchdown 821. Interesting concept of living full-time on a cruise ship going around the world. It's great if you have the funds. Maybe a timeshare cruise might be more affordable. Possibly, yes. Um, but again, this is where the cruise lines come in now. And, uh, you know, they're renting a cabin to us by the cruise. And it's kind of a it's not a timeshare because we don't have to worry about payments, which I'm happy about. Um, I'd far rather just rent my cabin by the week when I want to go. And if I don't like the itinerary, I'll book another cruise with another line or another area of the planet instead. Uh, but this this is an interesting concept about full-time living. This this is an interesting concept, I have to admit. Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, let me just double-check my messages. I kind of lost my place here. Okay, Peter uh, Hekema saying, on a ship like the world, uh, owners get a special assessment for anything over and above the monthly fee. In other words, if an engine needs to be replaced, the expense is split between the owners. Yeah, and I think that's the case with this, will be the case here, because the uh, fees are not locked in. They're they're variable, and uh, that's the you know one of the risks. But I can imagine, Peter, that the the um, the uh, owners and, and the, the operator of the ship uh, they will figure out, uh, you know, over the next 24 months, they'll kind of know how many miles they're going to put on the ship and that the majority of the ship's functions, as far as the engines go, will really not be to propel it because it'll be spending a week here and a week here and a week. It'll actually be to operate all the systems on board. And it'll be interesting to see if the ship will be in any way modified to accept onshore electricity in any way. Just uh, another thought. Uh, uh, Leslie's is saying, ah, subletting makes sense. Uh, Jenny Miller, hi, Bruce, 42 degrees in Toronto, leaving on the Crown Princess this Saturday. Woohoo! Yes, yes, indeed. That should be great, Jenny. Pamela Jordan saying, you don't have to have a passport to travel on a cruise ship. I think you do. I think you do have to have a passport to go on a cruise ship, Pamela, uh, especially if you're international. And if you're in Europe, oh, yeah, you need your passport. Uh, Canada won't. I can't get back in my own country without a passport. Canada won't leave. They will let me back in, but they'll give me one hell of a tough time about it. They want me to have a passport. I can't get to the U.S. without a passport with my car. Uh, it's, a, it's absolutely essential. Uh, Pat Reed is saying, I don't like the timeshare idea. It reminds me of Vegas where the timeshare people are like vultures. <laughs> uh, Pat, you make a good point, but you forgot one thing. They're like vultures everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> in Mexico, in the Cayman Islands, in Jamaica, they're waiting for you. They're going to get you. They want the commission. It's unbelievable. If you're if you're a good negotiator, you can take a timeshare salesman from eighteen thousand dollars for that week down to six, and they're still making a bunch of money on commission. It's unbelievable. Ah, oh, unreal commission. I I, I I do not go with timeshare. <laughs> try, try and sell your timeshare once you own one. Good luck. You can't get rid of a timeshare. There are people willing to give away a timeshare for a dollar. Just take it off of my hands 
because they don't want to pay those monthly fees to upkeep that unit that they bought, you know, 20 years ago in Cabo St. Lucas or whatever it was. Crazy. Uh, Pamela Jordan, if you have a birth certificate and ID and for married ladies have to have a copy of their marriage list of it, you can get on a cruise. Uh, Pamela, probably, uh, you know, I'm going with you, but um, boy, it's a lot easier if you get your passport. It just is just a lot easier. Uh, but again, this idea of this criminal thing, you know, uh, the background and all that. I don't believe cruise ships uh, go out of their way to do criminal checks on their passengers. I don't think they do anything like that. Um, I kind of get the impression that the, the if the passport passes through um, Homeland Security and through Jamaica and through Cayman and it's accepted, the passport doesn't have any red flags. Uh, the cruise lines are happy accepting the passengers. Um, but it's the issuing country that determines who can get a passport uh, for you know past tri transgressions that one may have had. <laughs> That's the way to say it. Uh, just saying. Um, let's see here. I've done it twice. Hey, Deanne, hi, Bruce. It's 66 degrees in Pasadena. Clouds are gathering for rain, which is expected tomorrow. Deanne, finally, thank you for some rain. What, isn't that great? Boy, that would be fantastic for you guys in Pasadena. You sure need it. Uh, George McCrar, why would anyone not want a U.S. passport? Because we're Canadian. And we're, we like our Canadian passports. That's why. <laughs> I'm just being a smart aleck, George. That's all. Don't mind me. <laughs> Pat Reed, you don't need a passport to travel on cruises that start and end closed looped hole cruises in the United States. Uh, only U.S. citizens. I, I agree. I, again, Pat, you're, you're right. If it's a U.S. only cruise, you don't need a passport. I agree. It's what I said about the Hawaii thing. But if you're going to do an international cruise, you know, any foreign countries, you need a passport. It will be a lot easier. Trust me. Charles Jordan, Bruce, as long as you return to the port that you left from, you don't need a passport. I don't think so. I, I don't, don't, don't think so. In the Cayman Islands, they are sticklers for passports. Uh, and they have, they, your passport, your passport better have more than six months life left on it, or they won't even accept you. So if your passport's got four months to go, you can't get in. They, they won't approve you. Um, it, it, you know, this is the experience I've had from Canada. Uh, it's getting tighter and tighter and much more restrictive. And of course, for Canadians, we have to get on an airplane to get down to the States to get on a cruise ship in, a many, in many instances, right? And you want to get on an airplane in Canada uh, going to the States, you can't get on an airplane without a passport. Not a chance. Not a chance. I cannot get in the United States without a passport, even if I want to go buy groceries in Bonners Ferry, 30 miles from my house. They won't let me in. Not a chance. And coming back, if I don't have a Canadian passport for my Canadian agent, he's looking at me going, how the hell did you get in there? How did you get into the States? Yeah, now I'm in, I'm in for the 15th degree. I'll tell you, oh, you don't want to be there. Trust me. Um, okay, what do we got here? Charles Jordan, Bruce, as long as you return to the port. Okay, Charlie Baum, from us to us for us. <laughs> from US to US to US. And, okay, I get you, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ex, ex Lopozo, uh, some won't let you board at all if you don't have a passport, even if you won't get out of the boat at foreign ports. I, I, I know. Yeah, exactly. You're not getting on that ship. Um, if, especially if you're a foreign national. Oh, yeah, you're, you're, to you're toast. Charles Jordan, okay, I meant for a U.S. port. Laugh out loud. I know, I know. Uh, Pat Reed, if you have outstanding felony warrants in the U.S., U.S. Homeland Security will arrest you when you get off the boat. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah, they'll they'll be waiting for you because it'll just you'll just pop up. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's pretty it's an efficient system, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. See, in Canada, uh, Can some Canadians are caught up in this god awful uh, don't fly list. Uh, there are a lot of Canadians, not a lot, but there are a number of Canadians, thousands, who don't know that they're on no fly lists because their names are kind of similar to a name of someone bad and they put that person on the no-fly list and they threw them in just to be on the safe side. So these poor Canadians get to the airport, they want to fly to Las Vegas for the weekend and they can't get on the plane because, oh, you're on a no-fly list. And the person's going, why? Why am I on? Well, we can't tell you that for national security reasons. You can't tell me for, you, what? Yeah, it's, it's just a, it's BS is what it is. And uh, so the poor passenger has to hire a lawyer at their expense to make an inquiry with the government of Canada to find out why they're on a thing. And no one will give them a straight answer because it's all hush-hush. It's all top secret. And your name is similar. We've had six-year-old children who are on no-fly lists. Yeah. 
that's how ridiculous this is. The panic is just is just unbelievable. But uh, you know, better safe than sorry. Well, yeah, better inconvenient than normal, or better stupid than than reasonable. I I I don't. That's my little rant for the day. Sorry. <laughs> I, I pity people getting caught in that system. I really do. I really pity them. Uh, it's just not fair. Um, let's see what do we got here. Uh, Crystal Johnson saying, "Have uh, you 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 have to have passports?" Yes, my dear. You have to have passports. Uh, you need passports. George McCrower, delete a U.S. from my earlier chauvinistically implied question. <laughs> Why would anyone traveling internationally? not want a password. I will say, George, good question. I will say, how can anyone possibly travel internationally without a passport? Uh, you got to have a passport. You want to get into Europe? You better have a passport. In Canada, you can't get on a plane if it's going out of the country. You cannot board without showing a valid passport, period. And uh, so if you're trying to jump a plane to London, England, you, 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 they're not going to let you in. Because when you board at the ticket agent you show them then when you get to the gate and you're getting on they show you show it again uh and they're they're checking it off and they're saying yep yep seat 7b as a passport 7d as a passport valid uh with you know at least six months expiry until after the trip is over the whole nine yards you're not going anywhere without a passport um at least out of your country uh, Debbie, hey there. Hi, Debbie. How are you? Uh, Charles Jordan, laugh a lot. Just move four miles south. It'll solve your problem of needing a passport. No, 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 no. That's not going to do it. I want to travel outside the U.S. I want to go into Mexico. I want to go to Europe. I want to go. I need a passport. Yeah. <laughs> and in between countries in Europe, I want to have it on me because that's the ultimate ID. That's the ultimate form of ID. Anyway, just it just it, passports are passports. Uh, things have changed. I mean, I remember crossing the U.S. border. All I, all I needed was a driver's license. And I remember crossing the U.S. border without even showing ID. You only answered the question, what nationality are you? I'm Canadian. Okay, go ahead. That's all you had to do. You're just driving your car across the border. It was like, no big deal. Come on in. Not now. Oh, my God. SWAT teams at the borders. Oh, it's it's pathetic is what's happened in our society. Completely pathetic that uh, now it's so, mm, and it's tense. And uh, some of these border guys are uh, highly qualified and a bunch of them are mall cops. They're just, they're not qualified for the job at hand and they have unlimited power. Scary stories on YouTube and elsewhere of, of people being abused at the borders. Terrible, oh, it's just, it's just a nightmare scenario. The world in which we live. What can I say? Okay, the question of the day, the topic of the day that I want to bring up was, um, what's our best our best pre-cruise tip for a new cruiser? Someone's going on a first-time cruise, and what is the uh, what is the tip we want to give these folks? Okay, let me just double check one more thing here. How are we doing for likes or, or thumbs ups? We got thirty thumbs ups. Fantastic. Please give us thumbs ups if you want to. Uh, we'd love to pile that up a little higher. And we're up to 30 already. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. There's a button here. There's a button here. I'd love to have you on as a subscriber. That would be fantastic. Pre-cruise tips from the viewers. I'll start with some of my own pre-cruise tips that you should uh, look into. Uh, first one, we kind of talked about this. Complete your online check-in, which means provide your passport number. <laughs> to the cruise company when you check in for your cruise. Excuse me. <laughs> I readjust my seat. Um, for those of you who are, who are Americans, uh, maybe it's different for you, but for us Canadians, uh, if I want to go on a cruise, I have to enter my passport number in my check-in form. <laughs> so it's my name, my address, my phone number, my passport number, date of expiry, and uh, if I enter one digit wrong, uh, I get a little red box. Cause, oh, you wrong number. Because they're already checking it while I'm doing it. It's like instantaneous. They're checking the validity of my passport as soon as I type the darn thing in there. I can't finish my check-in process without doing that. I have done a pre-check-in online with everything but the passport number, uh, emergency contact person. I've got a whole bunch of other stuff done. But then I come back a day or two later to complete the form. Because Norwegian or princess will say eight of nine things are done or eight of ten are completed. You have two things to go. 
one, your passport number and expiry date, and number two, the other information they needed. So pre-do your, your check-in uh, well in advance if you can. It just takes it off your mind. What you want is that confirmation number from the cruise line to say you're good to go, you're all checked in, you're all, you know, everything pre-check is done. Uh, you can now print off your bag tags if you like, and uh, you can even now consider uh, booking uh, massages or specialty restaurants or whatever they are trying to offer you and pre-sell you on the cruise, okay? Um, gather up a bunch of small bills. Gather up a bunch of $1 bills and $5 bills. Have about $51 bills on you, a couple of $5 bills with you because uh, it's, it's cash tip money. So the, the guys at the pier that you're handing the bags to, if they're worthy, give them a couple of bucks. Uh, if, the, uh, if the service on board is a fantastic, uh, you can tip a couple of dollars on pool deck to the person bringing you your drinks. Uh, maybe give them the cash tip to your waiter at the specialty steakhouse because they gave you a really nice service. Up to you. Uh, and then, of course, your room attendant, you may want to give them a few extra dollars over and above the regular tipping that's included in the, um, you know, that the, the cruise line is suggesting you make anyway. These are just extras. Little tip money. Um, uh, contact your phone provider before you leave home. Uh, so if you've got a telephone through AT&T or through Verizon or, you know, whoever you're using in Canada, we're using Bell and the other outfits, check with your phone provider that your telephone is not going to be costing you a zillion dollars because you took it to the Caribbean and forgot to shut off the roommate roaming or you sent a couple of texts, just want to say, hi, I'm having a great time in Jamaica. Didn't realize each one of these is $20. Uh, you want to check your phone provider for costs, fees, and maybe an international plan, uh, the kind of deal that will save you a serious heart attack later. Um, what else am I going to say? Oh, uh, research the cruise ports. Research the ports you're going to visit on your cruise. If you're you know, in the Mediterranean, you're going to be in Naples, going to be in Rome, going to be in uh, Florence. Uh, Go online, get onto YouTube, and watch other people's videos from those ports. I've done a few of them. You can see some of mine. And uh, find out what their experience was like because likely you're going to find someone that was on a cruise line that you're going to be on, and they took the shore excursion to the Vatican or to Pompeii or Herculaneum or into Florence, the Sidlini Tower of Pisa, and you want to find out whether they thought it was a good deal, they enjoyed it, was it worth the money? Did they have a good time? Was the you know was the bus in good shape? A anything? Intelligence, knowledge is power, and you want to do your homework before you get on the cruise. And that's what YouTube's all about. It's just there for you. Um, let's see. Also, you also want to. I just mentioned a little earlier. YouTube your ship. Simple as that. What's the name of your ship? The Oosterdam. Hit Oosterdam on the search bar, enter, and you'll see hundreds of videos about the Oosterdam. And if you want to find out the kind of cabin you are in, you'll be able to find that. You want to know what the uh, the Oosterdam Spa is like? Just type in Oosterdam Spa. Enter. You'll get someone who's made a video of the spa. And some of them are good. Some of them are crappy. Uh, but, you know, watch four or five of them, and you'll get a handle on what the spa looks like on the Oosterdam. This is the kind of stuff you can dig into before you get there. Uh, one thing I'll mention too, it depending on your, your physical condition, your age, your health, travel insurance. You may want to get travel insurance just for um, cancellation insurance on your flights, or if a flight caused you to miss the cruise, uh, you didn't get there in time, you need cancellation insurance for that, or you want to go for full-blown travel medical travel insurance. And I uh, caution you and urge you that if you are uh, on a lot of meds and you're, you know, this is going to be the last cruise, we're going to go one more time. I'm hanging on by a thread, but I'm doing it. Well, get the kind of coverage that covers all the, uh, the emergency evac uh, costs. If you have to be airlifted from a helicopter, a medical helicopter off the deck of a cruise ship because you've had a stroke or whatever, then be transported to land. And wherever that land is, uh, you know, whether it's Mexico, Cayman Islands, uh, um, St. Bart's, the United States, that bill to get you off that ship and get, it could be as high as 50 big ones, 50,000. It could be that bad. 
You want insurance covering everything and ask questions about deductibles, uh, maximum coverages, um, hospital stays, daily expenses and expenses for your traveling partner because you're in the hospital and your traveler is going to be sleeping in that chair over there or maybe it, it covers a hotel and meals and flight home and who knows what so that might be something to kind of cover so those are some of my those are some of my uh, uh, points to make the pre-cruise uh, 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 tips that that uh, new newbies and and all cruisers should know about I'd be lucky. I'd like to, I'd like to know what your thoughts are and uh, get your ideas, folks. Uh, let's see here. Um, let's see if I'm all the way up here on my uh, my thing. Oh, I got all kinds of comments. Sorry, I'm I'm going back because they're just coming in. Uh, <laughs> I still love that comment. Just move four miles south, Bruce. Your problems are over. Uh, do you have any idea who my president would be if I moved four miles south? Do you have any idea? Are you kidding me? Oh gosh. Oh my gosh. Uh, anyway, <laughs> too political. Uh, <laughs> Debbie is saying, my British husband has been waiting since last September for his renewal on his immigration card processing from Sydney, Nova Scotia. We are going to have to wait another couple of months, we hope. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what to tell you there other than make inquiries. What's taken so long? And, you know, if you're using a lawyer, Make inquiries. Uh, let's hope something, nothing's being held up. Hopefully, this is normal. Charles Jordan, here in the U.S., soon you'll be required to have an enhanced ID driver's license if you want to fly from any U.S. airport. Uh, yeah, Charles, we're heady on that. We had that in the last 10 years. This is old news in Canada. Um, all, all it is, Charles, is the, the driver's license now is such a uh, beautiful piece of work <laughs> plastic uh it's very difficult to uh to uh, forge and caught and to co um, counterfeit um it uh it does not mean you have to have a passport to back it up or anything like that but the uh, driver's licenses now are so much more sophisticated in canada than they used to be i remember when they were a piece of cardboard i mean remember those days uh and then they were just a, looked like a beat like a credit card now they're enhanced and their computer graphics are unbelievable. You get your picture taken at the DMV and you don't get your license right away. You have to wait for them to mail it to you in registered mail because it gets processed at the kind of the same place they process all government ID like passports as well. And then it comes back and they mail it to you and it's um, quite effective. So yeah, that's the way it's going with, with uh, enhanced ID. Uh, too many knockoff IDs out there, I'm afraid. Uh, Doreen Chapman making a uh, making a packing list. Yes, making a packing list is a darn good idea because you got to ask yourself, gee, you know, we're going to be in the Caribbean for seven days. Uh, we're going to be at these ports or Mediterranean or whatever, and it's this time of year. Say it's Alaska, and you're up there in May or you're up there in September. It's getting a little chilly. We should have this and this and this for each of us, and then check it off when you pack it, so you know. Yes, we packed it. The list is complete. Darn good idea. Uh, Excel, I remember um, doing that for Canada and Mexico when I used to live in the U.S. They wouldn't ask at all going into Mexico and coming out was a cursory questioning depending on how you looked for passports. Yeah, this was the old days. All different now, isn't it? Uh, Debbie saying 38 thumbs up from my screen. Okay, good stuff. We got 38 thumbs up. Thanks, folks. We'll take all the thumbs ups we can get on this video. If you see the thumbs up down there, give us a thumbs up. We want to pile them on. Um, Sylvan Forrest is saying tips for new cruisers. Bring lots of American $1 bills and carry a copy of your passport to leave in your cabins safe. Correct? Very good, sir. Absolutely right. Um, Alex Foposo from Tokyo is saying if you're doing excursions on or through the cruise, uh, look through uh, what you want to do early and see when you can start reserving things. Do it early if you can. Things can book up. Yes, um, there are times where, you know, 2,500 passengers, they may have enough buses for 300 passengers to go to a certain locale on, on you know, on a stop. But after 300, they can't take any more. And uh, you want to look at when you're booking online, when you're getting your, you know, your work done, you're checking in online, they may already show you the itineraries available, the, the, the onshore excursions that are already available, and you may be able to make reservations already 
for those. But you may have, uh, they may give you like a, a window where you can cancel, but it might be like 30 days. And after 30 days, you're on the hook for the deal, whether you do it or not. Just, I'll just throw that out there. It varies by cruise line. You'll have to read the fine print for yourself. Check with your travel agent. If you have a human travel agent, you want to do that. Um, George McCrower is saying pathetic isn't adequate. Watch the YouTube channels about Canadian, US, UK, Columbia, and other national border security enforcement agencies. Incredible. No passport. No entry. Go home now, period. Yeah, there's some serious stuff going on out there. Lisa Moore is saying carnival faster to the fun. FTTF. Yes, th that pass is a good idea from what I've heard and what people have been mentioning. It's, uh, it's uh, depending on how long your cruise is. Uh, it, it costs so much depending on the length of your cruise. But there are a lot of benefits for that faster to the fun pass. You may want to look into that. Uh, Peter Heckema, good idea to let your credit card company know you'll be using it out of the country. Exactly. Um, there was a time up until about, oh, two or three years ago here in Canada, uh, we in Canada, we had to call our credit card companies. I mean, they, they said, you have to call us before you leave the country and tell us how long you're going to be out of the country and where might you be using your credit card because they were thinking that, if, it, if your wallet got stolen and you lost it and someone started using it now in other countries uh, or, um, uh, you know, or whatever, and you called them and you said, listen, I lost my credit card. I'm in uh, Mexico and it's being used now in Jamaica. They would cut it off because it's being used in Jamaica and you didn't tell them you're going to Jamaica. Uh, but lately, the credit cards company have said, no, we're not even bothering with that anymore. You don't have to phone in anymore. Um, I think the credit card companies have so much insurance on their own that they're now covered for, for fraudulent amounts. Plus, the credit card hits a certain amount, a certain limit, and it just gets cut off anyway. And uh, the fraudster can only charge up so many dollars, and then the card is dead. Nonetheless, still not a fun thing to know that that could happen to you. Um, Leslie, uh, Leslie's Lovelies is saying, I once saw on the news an interview with an elderly woman who said she didn't want to live uh, in a nursing home. So she moved uh, onto a cruise ship. Uh, when the ship goes into dry dock, she moves uh, to another one. Uh, Leslie, this is not actually a very uncommon story. It's not extremely common, but yes, this has been happening for quite a while. There was a lady uh, full-time living on the Queen Elizabeth II. For years, she lived on the QE2 at unbelievable expense, but she had the money. Um, but there are seniors uh, in the U.S., um, and I would bet you some of them are Canadian citizens, who live on cruise ships for quite extended periods of time, certainly through the winter months. Um, there are lines where you can book, uh, you know, concurrent cruises, one after the other after the other, and you do the math, even, even through the high week of Christmas and the high week of uh, New Year's, they stay on the ships anyway, and they work it all out over like a 20-week or 24-week time frame. They divide it all out, and they come up with a pretty good pricing, an average price for the stay. And for what you're getting, uh, all the services that the cruise line is offering you, the meals, the uh, the amenities, uh, the room service, the, the room cleaning, the uh, bedding being done, all the bath sheet styles all replaced. These seniors are just going, I can't beat this deal. And uh, if you're on a Caribbean cruise loop in the winter and you know that you're going to be in, uh, you're going to be in, uh, in uh, Mexico every week on Thursdays, because that's the day that you land in, uh, you know, one of the Mexican ports, you know, once you get off the ship, just a block away or two are where all the pharmacies are. And you can buy the pharmacy or your pharmaceutical meds for one-tenth the price you can buy in the United States. And if you need dental work done, there are dentists over here, you're charging one-fifth the price of getting your teeth cleaned or getting a filling done or getting a crown, getting a bridge work done or full-blown dentures. I mean, there are savvy seniors out there who have figured it out that, you know, for five, six months of the year, I'm going to live on these cruise ships and I'm going to live this lifestyle. Uh, I don't mind that one darn bit because I don't want to be in a bloody nursing home uh, sitting in that same room and uh, and looking out the window and seeing the same darn view all the time and waiting to die. Why, why would you want to do that? Fantastic. Ooh, I see something happen here. Somebody sent me something. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Debbie, did you do that again? Um, 
Uh, let me see here. I think Debbie Emmanuel has uh, added $5 to my uh, Super Chat account in my tip jar. Thank you so very much. You're just too kind to me. Thank you ever so much. It's, it's, one of the, it's the only income I have. <laughs> I don't get any advertising anymore until I'm re-monetized. Re uh, Who knows when that'll happen. Um, let me just see. That was a good comment on the uh, nursing home, on the, the, the senior. Um, Excel Aposo from Tokyo. Make sure to check for what the local currencies will be for when you'll be traveling. Sometimes you can use your home U.S. currency internationally, but you may end up paying a lot more than the local dollar. Yes. Um, it, <laughs> Sometimes you get to a port, of, you get to a place, and they have two prices. They have the uh, visitor price, uh, and then they have the locals price. And uh, I can tell you right now, the price you want to pay is the locals price. Uh, and if you've got U.S. cash on you, and that's all you got, guess what? You're not from around here, are you? <laughs> You're going to pay the U.S. price because they're, they're going to just say, oh, yeah, this, uh, this, this bottle of cola is two bucks. Well, for you, two bucks is two bucks. You hand them two bucks. To a local, that call is fifty cents, but in their home currency. Keep that in keep that in mind. Uh, that's a good that's a good point. So if you're going to make a larger purchase, you know, uh, some jewelry or some artwork, haggle. It might be one way to go too, and uh, check around, shop around, and see who's offering what. You might be quickly you may quickly get down to the local price and not get hood hoodwinked on the higher price. George McCrower saying Google Maps, zoom in on your port and print it to see the walking areas around your port and the Shorex venues. That's a good idea too, George. Very good idea. And of course, you can also uh, t tell Google Maps, give me the satellite view. And then you can see the, the real world satellite view of your port. And you zoom in within a few blocks of where the ship is going to be porting. And then you can look around there by like a one mile radius. And you can see, oh, there's a park over here. Or there's a lovely, uh, there's a big church over here. There's a Seems to be a big boulevard here with a lot of cafes. You can see the umbrellas, uh, you know, where the tables are on the on the sidewalks. And that'll give you an idea where to kind of walk to. That's a good one, George. Good good intelligence, advanced intelligence. Charles Jordan, if you have um, cricket, you don't need do not need to put your phone on airplane mode. If you have cricket, good point, George. Thank you for that tip. Scott Batchley, uh, Norwegian requires a passport number to finish your check-in online. Yes, sir, they do. You're absolutely right. Scott Batchley says, Peter's right. I um, I, uh, uh, I didn't or I can't one time for NASA and it was declined. Won't do that again. Peter's right. I Something one time for NASA. Uh, Scott, you got a typo there and I don't know what you're trying to tell me. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, Michael, I forgot about the ID. Thanks. Okay. Gailey, yes, I print out the deck plans and study them so I've got an idea of where my cabin and other places are. Very good. I, I go to vacationstogo.com. I can enter the name of a ship on, the, on that site. It'll show me the deck plans. It'll show me pictures of the ship, and I can then study the deck plans there too, including the room numbers, and I can see where my room is, and I can figure out where I am on the ship. Exactly. Um, Roger Turvey, love the information. Thanks. Roger, thank you for joining. If you're new, thank you. Welcome. Debbie, uh, have you ever sailed on a P&O line? No, Debbie, I have not. I have not sailed on a P&O line. I know they're owned by Carnival. Uh, Pat Reed is saying, my tip is don't be late getting back to the ship. If you if you are, I will be waving at you as the, as the ship is leaving port. Yeah, that's right. You get back, you're, you're done for, and you better have your passport on you. Oh, my goodness, you have got to have your passport on you and your credit cards because now you've got to figure out how to catch up to the ship or find your way back to where the ship started from and wait for the ship to return because you're done for. Uh, yeah, be careful. Debbie, there's your there's your uh, super chat. I just see it now popping up. Thank you again so much. I, I really, really appreciate it. Uh, a fair, fair, um, a Mitchell question. Repositioning crews not coming or leaving North America, will they speak English on board? Uh, yes. Um, uh, Farah, I'm going to give you some good news. Um, I can tell you right now, um, almost, almost every cruise line, and I'm I'm going to say the large cruise line. So if you're on on any Carnival cruise, um, Carnival, Princess, Holland America, Seaborn, uh, probably oh P and O, of course. But even if you're on Ada cruises, which is predominantly German speaking, there are English speakers on board. Believe me, there are English speakers on board. Um, Norwegian, a uh, region seven seas, Royal Caribbean with celebrity and, uh, and it's uh, high end cruise lines. 
English speakers everywhere. Uh, MSCC side in Europe, you'll still come across English speakers. You will not be, uh, you will not feel uh, abandoned. Okay. Um, if you visit Berlin, Germany, which I've visited a number of times, love that city. Uh, I can tell you, you're in the heart of, you're in the heart of Germany, you're in the capital of Germany. Uh, English everywhere. English signs everywhere. Uh, Paris. Uh, you won't have a problem in Paris, believe me. <laughs> Hotel front desks, uh, coffee shops, they all they can all speak at least broken English, believe me. And they're very accommodating, very wonderful. They're wonderful people. Don't don't believe the rumors of, of arrogant French people. Don't believe it. Uh, very, very accommodating. Anywhere in Europe, you'll be fine. So uh, repositioning crews, worry not. English is broken everywhere. It's, yeah, it's not going to be a problem for you. Uh, Roger uh, Turvey saying, is it better to get a travel agent or do it yourself, put your own package together, first-time cruiser? Roger, uh, I am the epitome of a do-it-yourselfer. You're looking at this guy here who loves doing it himself. I just I just love finding my own cruise. I love putting my own hotel packages together before the cruise or after the cruise. I love putting together my airfare package, however I'm going to make it. I don't believe in just... Hurry, 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 get to the cruise, get on the boat, get off the boat, get back to the airport, get back home. Wasn't that a great trip? That ain't a holiday. No, that's a panic attack. That's what that is. Constant panic attack. You're worried about before you get there, am I going to make it? You're worried while you're on the ship, I'm going to get off on time to get off to the airport when I get home. And then when you're over, it's all over, you go, oh, that just cost me a fortune and I'm just glad it's over with. And that's not a holiday. A holiday for me with a cruise is you uh, travel somewhere else first. <laughs> Say it's a Los Angeles cruise, a uh, uh, Mexican Riviera. For me, being in Western Canada, I'm heading to Vegas. Vegas, baby, because what happens in Vegas kind of stays there. And so I'll go to Vegas for two or three days first. And then I'll take a, sh a, a quick Southwest airline shuttle flight, 45 minutes from uh, Vegas to uh, LAX, and then gra grab the shuttle bus uh, through through the cruise line to the ship. Could be the same day. Doesn't have to be the day after because it's Vegas to LA. Every 45 minutes is another flight. Um, but I've already made it to Vegas, so I know I'm that close. I know I can drive to the ship today if the airline can't fly me. I can rent a car one way, drive to the ship. Anyway, I get a morning flight. And I'm there plenty of time. But if I'm going to fly into Los Angeles, I'll spend a few days in LA. I'm going to see Hollywood. I'm going to go see... Uh, uh, hang out in in Venice Beach for a while. Uh, hang out in uh, Pasadena. Catch the flea market at the Rose Bowl. Uh, go to Palm Springs perhaps, and stay there for three or four days before I go to the cruise. That's that's my idea of a holiday. By the time I get the ship, I'm already relaxed. Now I'm on the ship. Got the cruise. Cruise is over a week later. Uh, after I get off the ship, I grab a rental car, and I'm going to take a drive uh, from uh, you know wherever I'm at to where I want to go. If I did LA first, I'm driving to Vegas. Or I'm flying to Vegas that afternoon and spend three nights in Vegas, and then I'll go home. And now I've made a lovely 10, 12, 14-day vacation combination. I did it all myself on my terms. I shopped for the best deal. I found either JetBlue, Southwest Airlines, Spirit Airlines, Frontier, if I want to fly those guys. But maybe American got me the best deal. Maybe United got me the best deal. Maybe Alaska Airlines got me the best deal. And I found a rental car if I needed a rental car. I found the hotel deal in Vegas. There's always a hotel deal in Vegas. And I put my itinerary together in Los Angeles. That's my idea of a holiday. I love doing all that myself and hunting down the cruise. Vacationstogo.com is what I use. I would try it out. See what you think. Uh, Doreen Chapman, Roger, I would use a travel agent, especially for your first time. Again, you can. Uh, there's nothing wrong with a travel agent. Nothing. As long as you've got a really dedicated, professional travel agent. I'm praying that you're not using a travel agent that is a part-timer and is just making a few extra bucks on the side. And the only reason they're really doing that job is that they can get deals on cruises and uh, holidays for themselves. You want a travel agent that will go to bat for you and you want to say to them, well, you know, I've got some time for a, for a vacation. Um, kind of thinking of a cruise. Uh, maybe it's a cruise in the Caribbean. Uh, what can you do? And now the travel agent comes to you and says, well, how about we put together a little uh, Disney World Universal Studio package for you? 
then get you over to Cape Canaveral on a shuttle bus three days, four days later, take your cruise, come back, and, uh, and from there we'll uh, we'll either put you up for a night or two back in Orlando or we'll, then we'll send you home. How about, a, how about that kind of a deal? You want a travel agent that can really be creative and go to work for you and say, I can combine stuff for you. I can do this, this, and this and give you a nice package price, give you a lovely break, and you won't feel like you're a stressed out zombie when you get back. Yeah, that's the way to go. Uh, Charles Jordan, she was from Florida. Who that ever that was? Charles, I don't know. Judy Anstas. Hey, Bruce, long time no see. Pouring rain and 44 degrees in Sacramento, California. Do you need the rain? Uh, is, it a, is it a good thing that you got rain? I hope it is. I hope you need the rain and you're getting rain that you desperately need. Uh, welcome back, Judy. Uh, Joshua Watson, Bruce, can you recommend a private island? <laughs> I don't own any at the present time, so no, uh, I can't. Uh, no, um, <laughs> uh, Joshua, I'm I'm not sure. You know what you mean. Uh, although I will say, um, Carnival through Princess All America, they have access to the private case. Uh, Royal Caribbean has access to Haiti, the Labadee. That's their private resort area, uh, and there are more being built in the Caribbean all the time by these cruise lines because they want to keep you in house. The whole time they got you, you get on that ship, and when you get off the ship, they want to put you on escorted tours, and when you get off the ship at another spot, it's a private island that they have or a private cay, and all the amenities are theirs, and you're spending money with them, just them, and nobody but them. Uh, and then, of course, for your security, no pickpockets, no uh, no trinket hawkers, uh, uh, no uh, desperados trying to rob you while you're taking a dip in the water uh, on the beach. So that's kind of nice to know. Uh, let's see here. Crystal Johnson, what if you have a prepaid boost mobile? I, you know, Crystal, I can't answer that question for you. I'm in Canada. Don't know what the pre boost mobile deal is. You may have to look into the entity that sold you that package and check out the fine print on that. Judy Anstis, whoops, California from 70 degrees, two weeks rain and 44 degrees today. Yeah, a little cool down, isn't it? Uh, but if the rain is needed, you take it any way you can get it. Charles Jordan, her name was Lee. Watch a setter known as Mama Lee. Oh, this is a uh, this is someone to watch out for, wasn't it, Charles? Was that it? Uh, Michael Crystal Johnson, look up Boost Mobile cruise ship. There you go. There's some advice for you, Crystal. Yes, uh, uh, yes, do it yourself. That's right, Roger Turvey. Thanks, Crystal Johnson. Thanks, Michael. Michael, the best is AT and T or Ver I think that's Verizon VZW. Michael, I'm going on a cruise in November, and Verizon is cheap. Fantastic. And then Michael's saying, my brother has AT&T, and he, he is in the UK now, added $10 to his plan. Hey, there's a, there's a good deal. Yeah, from all the way over there, fantastic. Uh, Leslie's Lovelies is saying, if you live in Pennsylvania, invest in a passport card, less than 40 bucks, to fly within the US in case your pre-enhanced driver's license isn't sufficient proof. Well, you know, if, if, the, if the driver's license is, and eventually it should be, uh, you know, the cost of a driver's license hopefully is rather economical compared to having to buy these extra pieces of ID and everything else. Uh, oh, Charles Jordan. No, she was the lady that retired and lived on a cruise ship. Oh, there you go. That's who you're talking about. She was the one who retired and lived on the cruise ship. Yeah. <clears throat> I know that um, we hear in the media some stories of this, you know, of the, these people. They make the media. And the uh, you know the camera crew catches up to them, and they are, they agree to be interviewed. Um, but it, it it can't. Some of these folks are living the high life. They're they're they have a balcony unit there, and it's kind of nice. It all depends on what it is you want. Excuse me. It all depends on you know what kind of lifestyle you want to accept and are willing to accept. Uh, for some travelers, having a a, a an ocean line cabin uh, an ocean view cabin is more than sufficient because you got the window view and uh you know your balcony is upstairs by pool deck and uh for your daily exercise you're going to walk around the promenade deck you know um whether you need a walker or not or you've got a cane or not maybe your daily exercise is only when the ship is at at port and then you walk around the uh, promenade deck because the ship isn't moving at all uh, where some sea days too windy and too tippy for you, that type of thing. Depending again on your condition, your age, your health, your strength. Um, I would think that if you're a full-time permanent person on board the cruise ship, 
I would try to take advantage of the uh, of the exercise area and work with the uh, the uh, physical uh, the physical uh, uh, you know train trainers over there to help uh, build your muscle mass if if it's possible. I mean, if you're 85, uh, just you know take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> Take it real easy. Maybe your exercise is lifting your teacup and having a sip of tea. That's your, I got you. I'm talking more like a 62 year old, obviously. <laughs> so whatever works for you, of course. Uh, <laughs> Pamela Jordan, good night. I'll see you next time. Pamela, take care. You're heading out. Anyway, so that was our, those are our thoughts. Um, I think we did a pretty good job today, folks. Uh, I think we've covered a lot of stuff here. Uh, Lisa Moore is saying, which is the best place to do uh, the Stingray Adventure Shore Excursion in Half Moon Cay or Grand Turk? I wouldn't know. Uh, I don't have the answer on that one off the top of my head. Does anyone uh, anyone know which is the better way to go? Uh, I know Stingray City in the Caymans is a hugely popular uh, deal, uh, but the uh, the uh, these two here can't uh, can't tell you which way to go. Uh, the, the Half Moon Cay, I think, is that private that private area. Uh, but Grand Turk is that in the in the public domain? Um, is it heavily trafficked as opposed to the Half Moon K? Um, uh, Leslie's is asking: Do virtual balcony rooms cost the same or more than an interior cabin? I'm going to guess. My guess is more. My guess, uh, but um, I haven't priced it out at this point. Uh, you may want to just check it out with Royal Caribbean um, and see if you can dig into their into you know pr pretend that you're thinking of a cruise uh, but i think those virtual cabins aren't those really reserved for are they coming up on the symphony of the seas or are they now available on the harmony of the seas not 100 percent sure on that answer uh, if anyone knows by all means uh, kick in the answer uh be kind of curious on that how many likes have we got 38 likes and one no like i got my usual no like here uh, as always so I'm up to 39 engagements. Thank you for that, folks. We're getting some engagements on that. Anyone wants to give us a thumbs up, we'll take them before we go off the air. Uh, I thought Royal Caribbean was the only one that had them, um, but I could be wrong. Does any other cruise line have virtual reality indoor suites other than Royal Caribbean? Um, I think I've seen a, a news video type clip of uh, the inside, uh, which I thought was Royal Caribbean. But I, I can't remember if anyone else had anything like that. I do know that some cruise lines, they don't even offer indoor, in, in, uh, inside rooms at all. Uh, Viking Cruise Lines, as an example, 930 passengers on a 900-foot long ship, no inside rooms, all balcony. Um, uh, I know that Royal Caribbean, of course, with the Explorer of the Seas and uh, uh, some of these other larger ships, Independence of the Seas, they had that indoor mall, that indoor walkway that's about five stories high, like an atrium, and they have cabins with windows that point inside, but all you're looking at are all the folks down there walking along and making a bunch of noise, and so that's one of the noisier inside rooms as far as I'm concerned. I don't know if it's worth your while, uh, but you're paying a premium for that because you're getting a, uh, you're getting a window view of the inside of the ship. But I do a sense that the cruise lines slowly but surely are trying to eliminate inside rooms from existence by replacing those spaces with paying places, paying spaces, whether it's an, an additional couple of restaurants, whether it's a couple of extra bars, uh, whether it's uh, other features uh, that they're, you know, virtual reality rooms, um, Norwegian Cruise Line with their, with their ice bar. Uh, you know, more and more inside space is being used up by cruise lines for event locations that generate money, much more money than they could rent an inside room for, for that 400 bucks a week that they've been getting that takes a full-time employee to service all every day with the sheets and the bedding and the towels and that type of thing. They can just stay with balcony and ocean view rooms and suites. The revenue per unit goes much higher and then they turn the inside of the ship into a, ge a money generation center a cash flow center rather than a dead space which is inside cabins but again certain ships that are so huge like the 6000 passenger symphony of the seas there will be certain floors where there will be several dozen inside rooms because it's dead space otherwise i suppose but uh, we'll see how time goes by as these architects get more creative 
and utilizing these shift spaces for event space rather than indoor or interior room only rental space. I'll see that, how that kind of comes up. Uh, yeah, Michael's saying, I'm sure others will get that way, but none so far. And it is possible. Um, Exoloso, Ex, Exolospo, I think some of the Disney ones have virtual portholes on some of their ships. Interesting. Pat Reed, Bruce, do you book your, your cruise through vacations to go or do you use them as a guide? I do both. I, I'll, I'll go through vacations to go.com to find my deal, to keep a track on pricing. Then I'll double check against their pricing to the cruise line. So if it's a Norwegian cruise, I'll go to the Norwegian website and I'll see what they're asking for the price for the, for the cruise. And um, I'll find out if I start booking it on Norwegian, do they throw in a cabin credit that I can't get over here? But if I look at vacations to go.com, they have the 800 number available. All I have to do is call the 800 number, tell them the deal number of the cruise, and they'll quote me the best price. And they'll say, look, Bruce, we understand you're looking on, you know, you know, on Norwegian. Uh, but keep in mind, I can get you, say, um, a category, blah, 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 balcony for that price or for 20 bucks more total per person, 40 bucks total. I can move you up three floors and put you in this unit. How about that? And that's just invaluable because the, 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 the generic website may not offer me anything like that at all. I also tell the, the vacations to go person, I am a frequent, you know, I'm a repeat customer of this cruise line if I've done it. I've been on this cruise line before they'll say oh well let me look you up and they put in the last name and they find oh yeah you were on that uh so-and-so ship three years ago right well you qualify for a 50 dollars room credit um you know because you're a frequent guest or whatever the deal is you put you put uh the norwegians to go the agent through their paces because that's what they live for i mean they're booking cruises and they want your business uh and i really appreciate their service i really like it uh but Look, if I can save $100 by doing it myself on Norwegian and the and, uh, vacations can't match it, I'm going to go there. I mean, yeah, of course. So uh, I do, uh, you know, I, I check both. To answer your question, um, Debbie's saying 42 likes. She's saying we got 42 likes. Fantastic, folks. Thank you for the likes. I'll take all I can get. If anyone hasn't done one, please give me one. If you'd like a great question, Pat, I was thinking just that. Uh, virtual portholes in the rooms so that the inside rooms look like they're ocean view rooms. Very interesting. Debbie is saying Alaska is expensive. Is it worth the price? Uh, Deanne is saying it is worth the price. Uh, if you have always wanted to do it, it's worth the price. Um, I've always not wanted to do it because I live in British Columbia. I'm surrounded by glaciers and mountains and trees. And uh, I would rather be in the Caribbean. So you know, to each his own. Um, but it, it, a lot of people love the, the Alaska cruises. Big time they love Alaska. So if you've always wanted to do it, do it. Absolutely do it. Um, Alexa Poso from Tokyo. I agree with Deanne. Alaska was beautiful. Debbie Manuel, have a great evening, Bruce. Great show. Thanks for answering my question today. Debbie, thank you for your contribution to my tip jar. Yet again, thank you very, very much. And have a great evening. We'll see you next time. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to wrap this up. It's been an hour and 46. I think I've kept you folks long enough. Remember, tomorrow, Tuesday, is two for Tuesday. I'm doing two shows tomorrow night, 5 o'clock Eastern, like always, and 8 o'clock Eastern tomorrow night. And on Thursday, I'll also do a double. So uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, just at 5 Eastern. On Tuesdays, Thursdays, I'll do 5 and 8 Eastern, two shows each of those days. Saturday, 2 o'clock Eastern, as always, we'll do eight shows a week for the next few weeks, see how it goes, and uh, see if we expand our reach even more. Uh, Gailey saying good night, all. Good night, Gailey. Leslie Lilly is saying, yes, I cruised on Celebrity May 2008. It was 55 degrees in Alaska. Yeah. Windbreaker, maybe a took mittens. Yes, absolutely. Boots. You're going to need hiking boots or uh, the kind of boots that you don't mind getting dirty because you're going to do some trails. It's going to be like rainy and mucky and yucky, maybe not hot and dry like Phoenix in uh, Ketchikan or Juneau or wherever you're going to get off the cruise. So keep that in mind. Don't be don't be thinking you're going to be wearing those pretty little high heels on shore. That isn't going to happen. Um, your brand new runners, you don't want to be doing that. Don't take your brand new Nikes that you just paid a top dollar for. Get them all gunked up. That's the last thing you want to do uh, for that. Um, Leslie's saying it rained. Yeah, see, that's what I mean. 
Soul Fusion, full, Soul Full Music 100. Great show. Thank you. Thanks so, so much. Thank you for everyone who joined me today. Thank you, everybody, for the likes. 45 ups, one down. That's fantastic. We got a real good start on the uh, likes today. And uh, hopefully they'll keep piling up as the after hours go on. Have a great evening, everybody. Uh, we'll see you uh, tomorrow at 5 and at 8 Eastern. Uh, those of you who want to watch both shows or either or. And in the meantime, I'm going to say my good night. So this is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying thanks for joining me today. I had a great day. I hope you've had a great day too. Everyone here saying their good nights quickly. Uh, yeah, say Charles. George, see you, Charles. Have yourselves a good one. I'll catch you tomorrow, and uh, we'll see you then. All right? Take care, everybody. Bye for now.